I hope everybody's having a great day. I wanted to have a little bit of a follow-up. I've been digging into a little bit more of the emission scandal that's uh, brewing with Cummins right now. This article specifically is off the Cummins website, and I've been looking into this about responsibility of this emission situation, and I'm specifically highlighting the power solutions that Cummins provides to their customers. In this case, for all of us, or most of us, it's going to be around the pickup trucks, the Ram 2500s to the 5500s. And you kind of see I'm highlighting here where Ram, or sorry, Cummins provides the engine, the power segments, including after treatment systems, and everything. Uh, not uh, Stellantis would not be responsible for emissions. They're saying uh, Cummins would be, okay? Now, this is a document um, talking about the Anitza recall for the 2019 to the 2020 trucks with the CP3. There's, 20, there's 10 pages you can kind of look into. Now I'm specifically highlighting Via Matori. This is the manufacturer of the 3-liter Eco Diesel, which was purchased by the FCA group who manages and owns also Ram trucks in 2014. So FCA owns Viamatori, who owns the three liter eco diesel. So they would have a different amount of responsibility from the EPA and the government around um, any emissions impacts. So something to think, that's different than the situation will be with Cummins and the heavy duty trucks. Now, this is on the departmentofjustice.gov, and it kind of goes into their thoughts and perspectives, and, and you're welcome. I'll include the link below, but some of the wording in this kind of caught my attention. You know, they're, they're talking about um, uh, emissions test violation against the Clean Air Act, but then they also talk that they installed, it's a cheat, they're cheating the federal laws, and they talk a little bit more around what the harm is. If you're not familiar um, with emissions or hydrocarbons of exhaust systems after treatment, the diesels are known for producing NOx, nitric oxides. Nitric oxides impact people around with breathing and respiratory issues. And this is interesting because it seems like they're tipping their hand a little bit and showing a little bit of where the cheating is taking place. The next I kind of looked in is I went into fuelie.com and I looked at several different model year trucks, specifically 2500s, 2014, 2018, 2019, and 2020. I looked at all of these trucks, selected the diesel engine, and I kind of wanted to look specifically for fuel economy for each model year. And for this as being a 2014, which is a 4th gen truck, you can kind of see the average fuel economy above based on 20,000 different fill-ups, but you can kind of see 17 miles per gallon is kind of the average uh, across the bell curve here, and you see an average uh, mile per gallon of 15, 000, 15 miles per gallon, 15.12, with 21,000 fill-ups. Now I do the same thing with the 2018. Once again, um, a Cummins engine selected, and I do the same thing with the 2019. There's less fuel fill-ups on the 2019s, but something to focus on here is the 15.25 average mile per gallon, and look at the middle of the bell curve. It's at 16 miles per gallon, not 17, okay? Now, there's less data on the 2019 trucks than there are the 2018 and 2020 trucks. I'm focusing a little bit on this, but I find it kind of interesting, the shape of the bell curve and the fuel economy when you select these different years. To me, maybe I'm being biased because I have a 2019 truck impacted by the CP3 recall, but I wonder if there's been some emission changes in the software in my truck to help it meet emissions, and this is why some of the 2019 trucks are getting worse fuel economy. I'm speculating a little bit here, but it's very interesting. I'm at 41,427 miles. Last time I filled this up, I looked back at a prior video, which I'll include a link down below, was at 39,657 miles. Of this amount of DEF consumption, I've only towed a 5,000 pound inline trailer 120 miles max. I've got some jugs out here ready to fill up. The first one I'm gonna use is just some leftover from before, which is basically nothing, but I had a little leftover. I mean, it's maybe a 10th of a gallon. And then I got this one, which is brand new. I haven't used anything. And I've got a third one here, if, uh, if unfortunately I need that much. And if not, I'll, I'll have a spare, but I just want to show you how much I go through here. Okay, both of these two are now empty. Let's see how much you used. So quickly this thing updates. I feel like it takes a minute. I sped this section up so you guys don't have to watch it, but you can kind of see how slowly it takes. It looks like it's just shy of full. I'm gonna open up the new jug. So I put in about 
2.6 gallons so far. So let's see how much more we take. Open this one up now. We just filled it all the way to the brim, and I'd say we used about three quarters of a gallon or so, but we're pouring out. We're completely full now. Let's say that's three quarters of a gallon plus 2.5, 3.2. This man had barely anything. I would be, I would even say 0.1 gallon. So I'd say it's somewhere in the 3.3 gallon range. All right, let's see if it does the last final tick. There we go. So the math on this, 41,427. I'm gonna subtract 39,657 miles and see what that turns out to be. 527 miles per gallon of deaf fluid. And that included 100 miles of tow in a lightweight trailer. That's as bad, if not worse, than my 2023 F350 high output diesel that quote unquote chugs the diesel, uh, the deaf fluid. And I was pulling 14,000 pounds and I'm pulling 5,000 pounds for 100 miles. I'm wondering when you do the recall, if this latest PCM flash is actually a duff consumption that makes the Cummins as bad or worse than the Power Stroke. I mean, that's horrible. Absolutely terrible for duff consumption. So for people saying the new Power Stroke is bad, oh, I've had both. And I'd say the Cummins is just as bad, if not worse. So I'm gonna fill the truck up with diesel right now. I'm about a half a tank of fuel, uh, 229 miles. The computer's saying 15.1. Let's see what we get hand calculated. how expensive diesel is here. All right, gonna do 30 second method. There we go, let's do the math now. Okay, I uh, just filled it up. I added the 4% onto the 229 miles as my tires are 4% larger than what's being recorded by the speedometer. So even including the 4% divided by how many miles it just went? I got 14.6 miles per gallon. That's horrible. This is literally the worst diesel I've ever had for fuel economy. People claiming all these things about, man, the Cummins is so great for fuel economy. Uh, my buddy Mike is driving similar driving conditions with his um, 2022 F350 Power Stroke right now. He's got about 40,000 miles as me. Similar size tires. He doesn't have an air dam up in front like me. And he's getting about 17 and a half, 18 miles per gallon. Um, and he did a trip the other day that was 100% highway with his family and got 20 and a half miles per gallon. I did a similar trip and I got 16 and a half miles per gallon. I'm making this video because I wonder if I already have this recall reflash that is being investigated by the EPA and this is why if you have a 2019 or maybe other year Cummins that your fuel economy is already impacted because this is pretty horrible. I mean, I just came from a 23 F350 high output diesel on 35 inch tires, no air dam, solid 20% better fuel economy, hand calculated all the time. I had four recalls on this truck and the first recall was the high pressure fuel pump where they do the CP3. And you can see they do, they reflash to the latest level. What's interesting is they tried to say this vehicle had an aftermarket tuner. This truck has never been flashed. And so I actually challenged them on these comments because I was kind of pissed that they put this because I think they saw this monitor on my dash and the DPF back exhaust. So I challenged the diesel technician and I said, Okay, show me where there's the tune on this thing. Let's look. So they hooked up the Bluetooth OBD2 scanner onto this, and it showed this truck has had three PCM scans in the life of it. The first, when it was new, it sounds like a second PCM scan, and the third for the recall that was just completed in 41,000 miles. The individual I, that I purchased this from, they had it from almost new, and they never put a, uh, a scan on it. The dealer couldn't confirm, but they said if it ever went to a to the dealer for any sort of programming for the ECM, that that would be considered a flash. Dealers can say that this vehicle had an aftermarket tuner, but this thing never had an aftermarket tuner. They're just basing it off the number of PCM scans on this truck, and it's only had three, and it hadn't been scanned before. And you can see when this was done before, it was at 39,000 miles on 1023. Anyhow, I hope this video is helpful. I'm gonna research and try to find out what this flash is 
And if my truck with the recall just received that flash, I sure hope that for the sake of Cummins owners, that there's not another flash coming that makes you burn more deaf and gets worse fuel economy because this will end up in a pretty big uh, lawsuit, I'm assuming towards Cummins or maybe Stellantis. I mean, this truck is already for me, I'm very disappointed in the fuel economy in this truck. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully uh, things get better for everybody, but I'm wondering if I already have the flash for the uh, emissions impact with additional SCR dosing and possibly a fuel economy hit. If you find this video helpful, feel free to give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna continue to keep posting content on this situation brewing with the RAM as it impacts me and thousands of others. Thanks for watching.